So this is a video describing uh, working with this extra activity, so extra uh, material. This is um, basically looking at combining section 2.4 and 2.5. So we're looking at combining our specific heat as well as our enthalpies. That's our heat of fusion and our heat of vaporization. Okay. So what we want to do is we have this information. We're going to work with ammonia. Okay. Normally we'll work with water, but uh, it's always good to use a different uh, compound so that we see the differences and the similarities. Okay. We want to sketch a heating curve for ammonia. Basically, we want to go from negative 100 degrees Celsius to zero degrees Celsius. So we'll have negative 100 degrees Celsius, and we're going to work up to zero degrees Celsius. So this is basically our temperature. And we're going to do that in units of degrees Celsius. Our x-axis here, this is going to be the heat added. So as we go from left to right, we're adding more and more and more heat. So if we start at negative 100 degrees Celsius, we're below the melting point of ammonia. So we will have to, we're dealing with solid ammonia, we're going to have to increase the temperature. We're gonna have to add heat, and that's going to go into increasing the temperature of our solid ammonia until we get to its melting point. So melting point of 95 degrees Celsius. Then, as we continue to add heat, since we're at the melting point, now we're going to start to convert and actually melt that ammonia. So going from a solid to a liquid. Now when we add heat to a solid, when we're melting it, the temperature does not change. Okay, so the heat that we add doesn't go into increasing the temperature. Okay, the heat that we add goes into converting from a solid to a liquid. So our temperature doesn't change. Now once we get to the end of this line, we've converted everything to a liquid. And the more heat that we add is going to go again into increasing our temperature. We're going to increase our temperature up to the boiling point. Boiling point of negative 33 degrees Celsius. No, this is not drawn to scale. Then once we get to the boiling point, we're going to, all of the energy, all of the heat that we're going to add to that does not increase the temperature, but it completes the phase change between a, a liquid and a gas. Once we have everything converted to a gas, then the more heat that we add just goes into raising the temperature. So now what we want to do is we want to label all of the following, we want to label the melting point, the boiling point, uh, where we have a solid, a liquid, and a gas. So our melting point, that's where we go from a solid to a liquid, okay, we have at negative 95 degrees Celsius, so that's our A. Our boiling point, is at negative 33 degrees Celsius. So we have our boiling point there. Now we start out with a solid. So our solid is down here. So I'm gonna actually use my S for my solid. And on this line here, where we don't increase the temperature, we actually have both solid and liquid present. Okay, so we have both solids and liquids present until we get everything converted or changed into a liquid. Then when we're increasing the temperature, all we have there is liquid. 
As we increase temperature, increase the temperature, we get to the boiling point, and we convert then between a liquid and a gas. So we have both phases present in this line here. Then we have everything converted to a gas. We can increase the temperature again, and that line corresponds to our gas. Now, next things we want to label here is our delta H of vaporization, how much it takes, how much energy it takes to convert between our liquid and our gas. Our delta H of fusion deals with the energy going between a solid and a liquid. So our delta H of vaporization is our conversion between the liquid and the gas. And that's going to be the amount of heat that has to be added to complete that transition. So between here and here, this is our delta H of vaporization. Our heat of fusion is over here. So between these two lines, that is our delta H of fusion. All right, so let's now talk about some calculations. Okay. Our first question, we say how much energy is required to raise the temperature of 85 grams of liquid ammonia from negative 75 degrees Celsius to negative 33 degrees Celsius? The key word of what we're looking at here is we excuse me, have this raise the temperature. Okay, anytime that we see this phrase, raising the temperature, we want to look at specific heat. So we need to know the specific heat of ammonia as a liquid. So we want to deal with it as a liquid. And I've done the courtesy of looking this up for you since I don't believe it's in your book. It could be. Um, but it is 0 0.78 joules per gram per degree Celsius. So we're going to follow our equation for specific heat where we have the heat is equal to the specific heat times the mass times the temperature. So our energy is equal to our specific heat, our 0 0.78 joules per gram per degree Celsius. We're going to multiply that by our mass, our 85 grams, and then by our delta T. Okay? So we are increasing our temperature from negative 75 degrees Celsius to negative 33. So this is our T final. This is T initial. So we have negative 33 minus our negative 75, and those are both in degrees Celsius. So I'll do my uh, delta T first. So I have negative 33 minus negative 75. So I have a change in temperature of 42 degrees Celsius. I'll just put this down below just so I know. I'm going to multiply that by my specific heat times my mass and I get 2784.6. If we're looking at significant figure wise, okay, we have quite a few digits here, so it's worth looking at our sig figs. Remember, uh, both myself and Sapling Learning kind of uh, allow for some variance in the sig figs, um, but do you do want to always keep an eye on that. Uh, in our specific heat, we have two sig figs. 
the zero out in front is not significant. So we have two sig figs here. In our mass, we have two sig figs. <clears throat> in our change in temperature, we also have two sig figs. Uh, so we're going to want to have just two sig figs in our answer here. So we have 2,800 joules. Next question. How much energy is required to evaporate 85 grams of ammonia at negative 33 degrees Celsius? I'm going to switch colors here. So keyword here now is we're looking at our evaporation. Evaporation okay, or vaporize has to do with going from a liquid to a gas. Whenever we are talking about doing a phase conversion here, a phase change, we're looking at our enthalpy. So this means that we want to look at our delta H of vaporization. So we want to take our mass of ammonia, our 85 grams. We want to multiply that by our enthalpy of vaporization, which was given to us up here. We have 1380 joules per gram. We get 11,700 and, oh, did I say it? Nope, 117,300 joules. So 117,300 joules. And again, sig figs. We have two sig figs in our mass, three sig figs in our enthalpy. So we just want two sig figs because we want the lowest amount of sig figs. So my final answer here would be 120,000 joules. Last question. Well, before the bonus one, last one dealing with this. Well, what is the total energy needed to change 85 grams of our liquid ammonia at 75 degrees Celsius to ammonia gas at negative 33 degrees Celsius. So some things that are, are jumping out at me when I read this question is I have two different temperatures. Okay, I have two temps which means that I had to increase my temperature from negative 75 uh, to negative 33 at some point. So that means that we're looking at our specific heat. This happens to be, since we're still 85 grams, remember uh, from question one, we did this calculation. Okay, so this portion of that uh, answer is going to be our 28 hundred joules from number one. My other vocabulary hints that I'm looking at is I have two different phases here. I have liquid and I have gas. Okay, so we have to do a phase change from our liquid to our gas. Whenever we do a phase change, we're talking about delta H of vaporization. And we've already calculated this in number two. So we know that this is 120,000 joules. That's from number two. In order to get our total energy, okay, we're looking at the total energy for this entire process, all we have to do is add these two values up together. So we have our increasing our temperature, 2,800 joules. We're going to add that to how much energy it takes 
to do the phase change. And we end up with 1,200. What? Uh, 1,122,800 1, joules. So that's my final answer of how much energy it takes to increase from liquid ammonia at negative 75 degrees Celsius to ammonia gas at negative 33 degrees Celsius. All right, go ahead and take a stab at this bonus question. Okay, okay we how much energy is required to raise the temperature of 125 grams of liquid ammonia at 33 degrees Celsius to negative 23 degrees Celsius. So you're increasing the temperature. Okay. Two things to note. You're increasing the temperature, but you're also starting with liquid ammonia. So you want to check uh, what... Check basically uh, a what, what boiling point or melting point you're near. Okay. Um, one hint I think I'm going to have to give you because I didn't give it to you earlier. Um, if we move up here. This was the specific heat of liquid ammonia. So this was NH3, which is ammonia as a liquid. NH3 as a gas is 2.04 joules per gram per degree Celsius. Mm -hmm.